I've been waiting for you. I'm glad you've joined us. Sign in as soon as you can and let us know that you're with us. You remember that several weeks ago, I started on um, something that uh, was, was quickened to me by um, reading a little book that was written by Charles Capps on calling those things that are not as though they were. And uh, it just shook me. And um, I had never read it before. And um, I know many of you watching me have read that long, long time ago, and it's kind of old revelation to you. But I want you to, I want you to walk with me through it now at, at really a, a, a deeper level. Uh, the first verse that uh, is called attention to there and that I call attention to was 1 Corinthians 1, 26, 27, and 28. And it says, look at yourself, Corinthians, look at yourself. Not many wise, not many mighty, and not many highborn or noble are chosen. But God has chosen, then he goes to the opposite and says, the foolish, the weak, and the base are the lowborn eugenically, uh, that's the Greek there, uh, to confound or bring to naught what is in power, the existing power. Then he goes on and says this, which is a deep biblical principle that I have discovered courses through the Bible on nearly every page. Things that are not, God calls into being to bring to zero the things that are. Now, if you add the word manifested there, you'll get the right idea from the Greek. And I'm going to get into that today. That's what I want to get into today. Into today. Now, why did God do that? Here's why God did that. That no flesh may glory in his presence. Flesh, fleshly carnality has no place in God's presence. Now, the thing that really quickens me in that passage, 1 Corinthians 1, 26, 27, and 28, is this. Three times the word and God chose or God chose appears. So I, I wrote down that word and then this way. Maybe a little bit <clears throat> too much or overkill, but watch it, watch it. Uh, here is the word, um, ex, exelexato is the word. And it means that God has selected out of many methods that he could choose. He has selected out to call those things that are not as though they were to bring to zero the things that are, you see? There is God's purpose in it. Now, if that's God's purpose, I want to get to and live in God's purpose. The next passage that this one calls attention to is the one in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So I want us to go there right now. And we read verse 13 of first Corinthians of second Corinthians four. And we also read verse 18. I'm interested now because we've dealt with both of these verses, but I'm interested now in revisiting again, verse 18. I want to tell you a secret. I just can't get away from it. I can't turn it loose yet. I've been in this verse and in this passage now for, for all the time that we've been into this study. And I can't get out of it. Here's, here's what it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Here's what it says. We do not look at the things which are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen. Wow. Let's stop right there. We don't look at. Now, this is the Greek word, as we said before, skopeo. And it doesn't mean just to look at with the eyes. It means really to focus on. It means to, to take aim at as with a bow and arrow or with a 
with a gun, a rifle. So don't focus on, don't um, spend your energy and your time trying to understand things that you can see, but rather focus on the things behind the things that you can see that you cannot see with the natural eye. Now, I know that's, that, that's pretty obvious in the text itself. But he goes on and says something else that's not obvious. He says, because or for the things which are seen are now my new King James uh, version here, which I love dearly, um, says temporary, temporary. Um, I believe the King James says temporal. The idea is passing. They have coalesced and come together like two bodies or like two objects. And their collision is exactly that, a collision. And it's going to be over. It's going to come to an end. But he says, the things that I want you to focus on, the things are the things that are not seen with the naked eye. And these, he says, are Iona, A-I-O-N-A, Iona. Now, I grant you that the church and all of us down through the decades and the centuries and indeed uh, the ages have translated this word to mean eternal. But it, 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 it doesn't mean eternal in the sense of interminably long without end or beginning what it means is ageless these things that we can see we won't see tomorrow you know things may be different tomorrow but the things that are not seen are ageless in other words they are timeless they they are beyond the accidents of life. Now, look at the rest of this. Look at the rest of this. Are, are for the things which are seen are temporary. I don't want to get too deeply into this because the word is proskairos, P-R-O-S, meaning outside the moment, outside the moment. Kairos is the moment. It's the now time. Now, God doesn't want us to get caught up in the, in, in the machinations of our circumstances and forget about a reality that is beyond those circumstances. It's like Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Wait a minute, things don't work together for good. Things will kill you. But the text doesn't say that things work together for good. The text truly says that in all things, God works together with us for our ultimate good. So this God who is unseen behind the scene is what he wants us to focus on. Now that brings me to something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and I really want to share it with you. Now, uh, let, me, let me give you two things. Number one, let's look at, at, at this. I hope you can see this. But what I see in this verse 18, is I see two arenas of being. Here is the arena of being. It's the Greek word antos. And that is what God says for us to focus on. He says, focus on the unseen. This is unseen. It's the essentia or the essence of everything. It is what God is uh, there is a great passage over in of all books the book of james it's in uh, the first 
chapter, the 17th verse. And, and, and look at what it says now. Look what it says. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift, I may get into that a little bit later, is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. So I want you to, with me, take a look at the difference between being and existence. Here is our existence. It's our circumstances. It's what we're caught up in. It's what we can see. Actuality. Corporality. Thingness. Thingness. It's, it's, it's life. I mean, it's say la vie. It's life, you know. But God says, don't let that capture your attention. Don't get wrapped up in that. Because it's the things. They will destroy you. But focus instead out here on the eternal the timeless, the ageless. The Bible says in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Any scholar worth his salt will tell you heavens and earth is an idiom, a euphemism or an idiom, and it means everything. What is there that's not in heaven or the earth? Nothing. God created everything, boom, by the word of his mouth, and he upholds them by the power of his word. Now they're all there. We can't see them with the natural eyes, but they're there. Gehazi, Elisha's servant, couldn't see the armies of God encamped around the Assyrians that he thought were there to destroy him. But Elisha could see them because he didn't focus on the circumstances of his existence, he focused on the father of lights who has every good and every perfect gift. Here you are with sickness raging through your body. There is your healing. God says, focus on that. Focus on that. It's in me. Put your attention on it. Don't curse what is. Call what is not seen into actuality, into corporality, into thingness. We can call into our existence the things that we cannot see that are always, always there, created by the hand of a God who loves us more than we can think or ask or imagine. You know what this is? This is the principle of incarnation. It is the principle of incarnation. And I want to talk about that for a moment. Keep this in your mind, if you will. The principle of incarnation. Just this morning, very interesting, uh, a friend of mine, I wish we were better friends, and I intend to make that happen uh, very soon. His name's Tony Miller, and he pastors a great church in Oklahoma City. He tweeted this morning, just as I was coming down the stairs into my study to do this, this program. Here's what he said. Tony said, to engage in prayer is to initiate an uprising against the disorder and the chaos that fills our world. It is the avenue of engaging the unseen world, inviting the reign of the true king into our present circumstances. I said, Tony, you just preached my sermon. This is incredible, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, here is the ultimate incarnation. God looked on a world that was lost in darkness and in sin. And God sent his only begotten son, incarnation, incarnation. You see, the answer 
incarnates the problem. God was in Christ reconciling. What was what was what were the circumstances? Alienation. What is sin? Alienation. God was in Christ reconciling Ton Cosmon, the world, the sons of Adam, unto himself. One of my favorite passages in all of scriptures, that great passage in Colossians, in him, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily incarnation you see god god has given us his ability to incarnate the unseen into what we see taste touch smell feel hear what a what a miracle what a opportunity Every good and perfect gift. Oh, I, I will at another time, I will deal with that because there are good gifts and then there are perfect gifts. They come down from Anno, Anothen. Now the word for heaven is Urano, Anno. Anno means above. Heaven's our above. <laughs> I love that. Every good and perfect gift, perfect gift, just briefly, and I'm going to, I'm going to have to uh, move towards the caboose here because we're over halfway through. Every good gift and every perfect gift. Now the word perfect is is a is a wonderful word it's the word teleos teleos when jesus was on the cross watch this now he said it is finished that's the word teleos tetelestai is the way it is finished but that that's all has to do with grammar but he said tell us and that meant that this was the goal of his being in existence. This was the goal of Jesus coming into earth. This was the reason, the purpose that God sent Jesus into the earth. It's finished. What finished? Plan of redemption finished reconciliation prepared completed handed to us to accept by simple faith every perfect gift everything designed to reconcile us comes down not from our circumstances but from our father the things which we cannot see are always the answer to the things that we can. This, this is what this, this great, great word says to me. Now I want to show you one more thing and uh, here it is. And uh, see, we can get this existence. Now you got to look at it in terms of this. Now don't forget, you've got to look at it in terms of this this is existence where we are this is being where god is god says focus scopeo on this while you blepo this and here's why watch existence is reality as presented in appearance this is your Merriam-Webster dictionary. I just took it out of the one on my desk. Existence is reality as presented in appearance. That's what we can see. That's what we blepo. But essence is the permanent as contrasted to the accidental. 
the ultimate or the real nature of a thing. You know, we don't have to be satisfied with things as they are. We can call those things that we cannot see, but that we know are there because of the character and the nature of our God who has created it all. We can call those to bring to zero the things that we can see that are hurting us. Now, don't get sidetracked by the use of the word accidental. That's really a philosophical term. And, uh, and, and I, I need, here's my dictionary, by the way, here, here's my dictionary. Here's my dictionary. And it, it, it has the whole pages on accidental. And here is the meaning of accidental as I'm using it. Watch, watch. Arising from or produced by extrinsic, not intrinsic, extrinsic, secondary, or additional causes. See, God didn't cause this. God has not caused the chaos in which you live. God has not done that. That is, it is not God's will for you to live in chaos. It is not God's will for you to live in pain. It is not God's will for you to live in poverty. It is not God's will for you to live outside of his kairos, his time, his moment, his purpose for you. But it's accidental. Now, it doesn't mean that it's not to be blamed. It's not blameless no no we did it to ourselves by forgetting who we truly are but our circumstances arise from forces that are extrinsic secondary accidental the small g god of this world causes those things but they, but they are not innate. They are not intrinsic. And they are not of the real nature of you and me. The traps that the devil wants to catch us all up in. Some of those traps feel good. Money, making money. <laughs> in, in, in wrong relationship that feels good momentarily a lot of things you see but I want always to look at life not just out of these eyes but I want these eyes to be able to see beyond the chaos beyond the moment into the timeless and the ageless because I know that every good and perfect gift is there waiting for me to claim it and snatch it and take hold of it and live by it. Because it comes down out of being into existence, out of the unseen into the seen from my father. I pray that this captures you as, as it has captured me. Doesn't mean that I'm oblivious to what's going on. No, 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 no. I can see the things that are better and from a purer perspective when I can also see the things that are not. See, this gives me an eternal or a timeless or an ageless perspective. I pray that for each of us today. We're running out of time, but I, I, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear a response from you. I'd like you to go to our website at any point and, and engage us. Um, let's communicate. God bless you, and God sink this truth into your spirit in a brand new way.
Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.